In some cases, the heroes during times of war are mass murderers during times of peace, and nowhere is that more evident than Full Metal Alchemist. Originally a manga, Full Metal Alchemist was adapted into two different anime series, one in 2003 and then another in 2009. We'll be focusing on the 2009 Brotherhood anime in this video, as it's more accurate to the manga than the 2003 version. Welcome to Otaku Binge, this is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Good to Evil. As usual, we'll be starting our list with the best of the best and working our way down. These characters are the good. Our gold medal of good goes to Winry Rockbell, the Elric's resident mechanic. Winry is the lifelong friend of the Elric brothers and eventually, their go-to automail mechanic, the daughter of two medics who were part of the Ishval Civil War and who got killed by Scar. She was raised by her grandmother Pinaku and became one of the greatest automail mechanics in the business. Throughout the series, she consistently repairs and replaces the automail limbs that Edward uses due to them being damaged quite often. Here you go! It's all ready! She is inherently a good person. She helps deliver a baby in Rush Valley and refuses to kill Scar, even though she had a chance for that revenge. She bandages up an injured Scar and even refuses to leave the country because she wanted to help Ed and Al fight. Winry deserves our top spot for a plethora of reasons, as she is one of the few characters to not have a body count in the series. Not far behind her with the silver medal of good is her grandmother, Pinako Rockbell, who falls just below her granddaughter, if only for her lack of pertinent screen time. She is a well-renowned and popular engineer. She is responsible for not only the birth of the Elric brothers by introducing Hohenheim and Trisha, but she is also responsible for the surgery that saved Edward's life after his experience in the Gate of Truth. She was the sole caretaker of Winry and was the only parental figure to Ed and Al after Trisha's death. If she had more actions to talk about, we may have given her the gold, but she isn't as consistently forgiving and helpful as Winry was by the end of the series. Taking the Bronze Medal of Good was one of the hardest characters on this list to rank, none other than everyone's favorite father character, Maze Hughes. Hughes is well known and memorable for multiple reasons not least of which is his very recurring and very recognizable love for his wife and daughter. He, much like a lot of the other high-ranking military officials, was a frontline soldier during the Ishval Civil War. He was promoted to captain thanks to the deaths of each of his commanding officers. As the war came to a close, Hughes promised Roy that he would help him become king, so that they could help everyone below them. He truly cares for Roy, telling him to lay low while Scar goes around slaying state alchemists, and saving Ed and Al from the aforementioned serial killer. Hughes is also the center of possibly the saddest death in the entire series. After he finds out the truth about the higher echelons of Amestris and their connection to the homunculi, he gets killed by Envy disguised as his wife. You humans don't make any sense to me. Hughes is one of the sweetest and most caring individuals in the series and is only dragged down because of his part in the Civil War, which of course was all under orders. From one soldier to another, Olivier Armstrong ranks next on our list. Olivier is a major general in the Amestris military and the heiress to the Armstrong family. Being the older sister of Alex Armstrong, Olivier is one of the few military characters in the show whose role in the Ishval Civil War is unclear at best. Because of this, we don't have an explicit body count like many others. She is nonetheless shown to be a caring individual to some degree, saying that she only judges people on what she sees with her own two eyes. She is determined to save her base and her soldiers, going as far as to kill the corrupt General Raven. She takes an official as a hostage and shoots Gardner because she worked as a double agent for the Elrics. She cares for human life regardless, as she saves trapped civilians and even saves the serial killer Scar if he promises to change his ways. She falls just shy of the Bronze Medal of Good because of her venomous relationship with her brother and other people in the show, although this does get mended later on. Following is the master of alkahestry, Mei Chang. 
May is from Zing, a country east of Amestris, which is across a long treacherous desert. The first thing she does is save a civilian from a collapsed mine. She even eventually becomes close friends and traveling partner of Scar and Yoki. However, at the start of the series, she is still a small girl, which leads to her making interesting decisions. She has a crush on Edward, but when he is not as she envisioned, she attacks him. Because she is a master of alkahestry, she usually heals her allies, sealing Hawkeye's neck wound and healing Marco's face after it's disfigured by Scar. She's also the one who helps Alphonse trade his soul back with Truth to gain Edward's arm back. May shows a lot of maturity by the end of the series, and the only reason she ranks below Olivier is because she is hot-headed and quick to change her mind for a while. Speaking of hot-headedness, the Elric's mentor, Izumi Curtis, is next. Izumi is a self-taught alchemist who trained and taught Edward and Alphonse in the ways of alchemy by having them survive for a month in the wilderness. Izumi taught the brothers this way because she survived a similar situation where she forged the theory of one is all, all is one. She would then meet her soon-to-be husband, Sig Curtis, and the two would attempt to have a child a multitude of times. Her child would die during the birth, which left Izumi depressed enough to attempt human transmutation. Her trip through the Gate of Truth would leave her without a multitude of inner organs and coughing up blood quite often. However, this didn't stop her from being a helpful alchemist who helped a town from flooding by making a dam out of the earth. She is shown to profusely care for her husband and her students, going to try and save Alphonse from greed at the Devil's Nest. She also helps Ed and Al fight against Father during the events of the Promised Day, as she had passed through the Gate of Truth. From Mentor to Apprentice, the living armor, Alphonse Elric, ranks next on our list. Alphonse is the younger brother of Edward and was bound to Van Hohenheim's old armor with a blood bond. Alphonse lost his body when he passed through the Gate of Truth alongside his brother. This happened when they tried to commit human transmutation to bring their mother back from the dead. Alphonse is well recognized as a sweet and innocent child stuck within a massive suit of armor. He cares for his brother and friends, jumping in front of attacks on more than one occasion. He's also shown to care about strangers, trying to take in and feed the sleeping Lin Yao, who was in the street. During the final fight with Father, he initially refused to go back to his original body so he could continue fighting, but did so to give Edward his arm back so he could finish the job. Keep moving, brother. Alphonse is one of the nicest characters in the show, and the only reason he ranks this low is because of his initial thinking that his whole life was false. His selfless actions rank him only slightly higher than his brother. Speaking of, Edward Elric ranks next. Edward is a state alchemist who gained the title of Full Metal Alchemist due to his auto male limbs. He gained his auto male limbs from Winry after losing his arm and leg by passing through the Gate of Truth. His original goal was to find and obtain a Philosopher's Stone to regain his limbs in Al's original body. He eventually finds out the truth about the stone requiring the sacrifice of many human lives which causes him to discard the idea. After this point, he says that there would be no more casualties in their quest for their bodies, although this wouldn't be held up. He tries to stop Ling from becoming the new Greed and even tries to break his control after the merge is complete because he cares about the prince. Ling would never give up and surrender himself so easily! He asks Winry to leave the country so she doesn't get harmed by father, although she denies this idea. By the end of the series, he gives up his alchemy to save his family and friends, even killing father after a long battle, saving a mistress and quite possibly the world. Edward is the main protagonist and falls short of the gray area because his good actions are more than his bad ones, although he is quick to anger and quite selfish. Next we have Van Hohenheim, the father of Edward and Alphonse Elric. Van Hohenheim was once a house slave to a powerful alchemist in the ancient country of Xerxesik. His blood was drawn by the alchemist and was used to create the homunculus in the flask, later known as Father. After, Father gave Hohenheim immortality by making him into a human philosopher's stone. He wandered the world and eventually met his future wife, Trisha, 
He then eventually left his family because, as an immortal, he feared watching his family grow old and die before him. From this point onward, he tries to stop father's plot so that he would be mortal once more. I won't let you devour any more people. He grew to be a wandering alchemist and help people. He rearranges Azumi's internal organs so she isn't as much in pain from her internal bleeding. He is then the de facto leader in the fight with father and is willing to sacrifice his life for Alphonse's life. With his help and other human sacrifices, Edward can defeat father and stop homunculi. He then dies with a smile on his face, reuniting with Trisha in the afterlife. Hohenheim may consider himself a terrible father, but we think that he's only a bad father from his own circumstances of being an immortal. But without his help, father would not have been defeated, which lands him here on our list. The prince in second greed, Ling Yao, ranks next. Ling Yao is the twelfth son of the emperor and therefore twelfth in line to become emperor himself. Being the son of the emperor, he is under constant threat of assassination which caused him to be crafty and quick-witted. His goal was to obtain a philosopher's stone to gain his father's favor and become next in line. Even though he cares profusely for his goal, he finds Fu and Lan Fan, his bodyguards, just as important. He refuses to leave Lan Fan behind, which causes her to sever her own arm. He's even the one who reveals the fact that King Bradley is a homunculi. He's mostly a good guy, but the reason he ends up this low is that he enthusiastically wants to become the second greed. Although, he manages to guilt greed into becoming a good guy, which stops him from falling any lower. Rounding out our good section, we have the strong arm alchemist, Alex Armstrong. Armstrong is a major in the state military and was a human weapon during the Ishval Civil War. During the Civil War, he was ordered to box in civilians using earthen walls so the other soldiers could pick them up. He even tries to save a mother and her child, but they are then killed by Kimberly. The Civil War caused him to be unable to fulfill his duties, which caused him to be an embarrassment for the Armstrong family and especially his older sister, Olivier. After the war ended, he continued to work in the military, still feeling that he was doing more good than harm while working for them. Armstrong briefly became a bodyguard for the Elric brothers, even trying to stop them from going to lab number 5. He abducts Edward to take him through the desert and to the ruins under Mustang's order. After Ling reveals that Bradley was a homunculus and Mustang reveals this to Armstrong, he laments his service. During the promised day, he tries to save as many civilians as possible and even goes to save Olivier even though she didn't particularly like him. Armstrong is one of the best soldiers, both because he follows orders but understands when it's time to disobey which is what keeps him out of the gray area. Speaking of which, we're now entering the neutral territory, where our more ambiguous characters live. This is the gray area. Starting off our relatively small gray area is Riza Hawkeye, who is about as on the line as it can get. She is the daughter of Berthold. Hawkeye is an alchemist who perfected the fire style of alchemy that Roy Mustang would eventually use. Riza had the code to the alchemical style on her back, put there by her father so it wouldn't be stolen easily. Riza would eventually join the military alongside Roy Mustang and was a sniper in the Ishval Civil War. She felt disgusted that alchemy was being used to slay the Ishvillians and even contemplated killing Roy because of how he was using his alchemy. I thought alchemy was meant to be used to help people. After the war, she was wrecked with guilt over the body count she had amassed under the orders of her superiors. But even after the war, she stayed in the military so she could work alongside Roy and shoot him if he strays off the right path. She is a loyal soldier to Mustang, especially after finding out the truth of Central Command and the homunculus. She goes as far as to desert the military to prepare with Mustang for the promised day. Hawkeye even continues to work with Mustang after he becomes king because she wants to help others as they have helped her. Hawkeye only ranks in the gray area because of her actions during the Civil War, which were under orders. That stops her from dropping into the evil category because while her actions were repulsive, they were under orders, which lands her in the gray. Not far behind his subordinate, Roy Mustang, the flame alchemist, ranks next. 
Mustang is an orphan child who grew up under the care of Madame Christmas. He grew up learning the power of flame alchemy from Berthold Hawkeye, which led him into joining the military. He was a human weapon for the military during the Ishval Civil War, slaying hundreds of people under the orders from the military. During and after the Civil War, he started his quest to become the king so that he can help people who are below him on the totem pole. He has Hawkeye stay as his bodyguard and tells her to kill him if he strays off the path of righteousness. Mustang convinces Ed to join the state alchemist program and swears he'll stay silent about the human transmutation attempt in exchange for the Elric's loyalty. He's more than qualified to become a state alchemist. He cares for his soldiers and friends, vowing to avenge Hugh's death and wanting to hunt down and execute Scar. He fakes the death of Marla Ross to stop her execution and refuses to leave the military when Hawkeye and Winry are taken as hostages. During the promised day, he loses his eyesight thanks to being forced through the Gate of Truth. Even though he was blind, he still fought against Father as best he could, and after his defeat, refused to heal his eyesight until Havoc's spine was healed. Mustang is a loyal friend whose eyes may have been blinded, but he never took his eyes off his goal to help others and eventually manages to do so. Next up on our list is Greed, the defecting homunculus. Greed is a homunculus created by Father and was hiding out in the Devil's Nest Bar in Dublin. Greed is by far the best homunculus, having saved his Chimera minions from military experimentation. However, his initial actions are what drop him pretty low on our list, such as when he kidnaps Alphonse to learn about his blonde blood. How'd you get your body? However, he stays defiant to Father up until his last breath. Both times he dies. After his rebirth in Ling Yao's body, he is a blank slate and loyal to Father, at least until Ling reminds him of his past. Greed kills one of his old minions, Beto, and Ling reminds him of who he was, causing Greed to break down because of it. He even helps Edward take down Father, being absorbed and turning Father's skin into weak graphite, which allows Edward to finish him off. Greed sacrifices himself to finish off Father, which makes him rank higher than his homunculus brethren. And rounding out our gray area is the alchemist killer, Scar. Scar was a Ishvalian who opposed the idea of the assimilation of his country with Amestris. He was harmed during the Ishval Civil War and rescued by the Rock Bells who healed him. When he awoke, he slew the Rock Bells and swore revenge on the state alchemists who harmed him and killed his brother. It was revealed that Scar has killed at least 13 state alchemists and attempted to kill Edward twice. However, he was willing to spare Alphonse when Edward offered his own life in exchange. She even tells Winry that she has every right to shoot him if she so wished to do so knowing what he did. Shooting me would be justified. However, after his second spree claimed three victims, he met Mei Chang who became fast friends with him, even having him find her lost panda. He is an angry man who is looking for revenge, but a man of principles nonetheless. He works alongside Edward and Al against Father. After the promised day closes, he works alongside Miles to save the Ishful religion and people. Despite his body count, he has a satisfying redemption arc, which saves his character just enough to keep him in the gray. Finally, it's about time that we get to our last and most vile category. These characters are the bad and evil. Starting out, we have Sloth. Sloth is the fifth homunculus created by Father and doesn't appear very often in the show. He was tasked with digging the giant transmutation circle that Father was going to use and was doing so for a while. He hates work, feeling that everything he is forced to do is highly bothersome. He smiles upon being killed by Armstrong as he found life itself to be bothersome as well. The reason he ranks at the very top of our evil category is that he is the clearest example of just following orders. While this wouldn't be that bad, his orders do lead to an entire country being killed, so take that for what it is. Following Sloth is his younger brother, Gluttony, the failed gate. Gluttony is the sixth homunculus created by Father and an attempt to make a foe gate of truth. Gluttony is a slave to not only Father, but to his appetites wanting to eat Cornello because he was useless to the homunculus. 
After Lust dies, he becomes unhappy and depressed, leading him to eat Envy, Ling, and Edward. Gluttony is a slave to his passions, which stops him from falling further. But he still works under the orders of father, which places him here. Gluttony's mother figure, Lust, ranks next on our list. Lust is the second homunculus made by father as the object of other people's lust. She acts like a mother towards Gluttony, making sure to stop him from eating too many weird things. She shows very little mercy, executing Cornello when he is defeated by Ed and Al, or attempting to kill Hughes when he finds out the truth. She burns down the Central City Library when she grew impatient with trying to find something. She even allows Gluttony to try and eat Scar, even though he fails at doing so. She severs Havoc's spine and leaves him paralyzed and shreds her minions, the Slicer Brothers, while they fought Edward. She is the first of the homunculus in this section to not be just following orders. Next up we have King Bradley, aka Wrath. Bradley is the youngest homunculus created by father from a human orphan with no name or family. He was raised by father to become the king of a mistress, so father had a pawn in the highest echelon. All of his actions were under orders from father to stop people from finding the truth, leading to merciless slaughter. He slaughters all of Greed's gang and then kidnaps his brother to bring him back to father. I made an unexpected catch. He essentially kidnaps Hawkeye and keeps Winry under constant surveillance so Roy and the Elrics won't step out of line. He kills hundreds during the promised day, including both Fu and Buccaneer, and pushes Mustang through the Gate of Truth, making him lose his eyesight. He may have been following orders, but he has one of the heftiest body counts on this list and has no problem silencing his opposition, which brings him pretty far down. Grabbing our bronze medal of evil, we have Pride, aka Selene Bradley. Pride is the first homunculus created by father and is able to give orders to his siblings. Pride appears relatively late in the show, but is hinted to be partly responsible for some of the atrocities that happen on behalf of the other homunculi. He also is shown to not care about his siblings or humans, splitting gluttony in half and ingesting his philosopher's stone, so he can continue to fight. He is also the one who activates the transmutation circle that forces Roy to become a human transmutation. Pride does get reborn truly as Selene Bradley and shows no recollection of father or the homunculus. This is what stops him from grabbing the silver medal of evil because of his redemption, but he's still in command of and guilty of some really heinous actions throughout. Moving on to the silver medal of evil, it may come to a surprise, but we've decided to give it to Envy. Envy is the fourth homunculus created by father and has a laundry list of problems. He was created specifically to cause mass amounts of distrust and bloodshed with his shape-shifting powers. He shifts into Hugh's wife and then kills him when he can't fight the vision of her. He releases Sulf J. Kimberly from prison and manipulates him into working for the homunculus under Bradley's orders. Kimberly was an alchemist arrested for killing people not on the approved kill list. Even as he is dying, he tries to get everyone in Ed's group to fight amongst themselves. But his most heinous action is when he shot a child in the face, the gunshot that started the brutal Ishful Civil War. If it weren't for Envy, under orders from Father, Armstrong, Kimberly, and Mustang wouldn't be human weapons and Scar wouldn't be seeking revenge. The only reason he doesn't reach number one is because someone has to pull the strings. Speaking of, the person pulling those strings gets the gold medal of evil, and that is Father. Father was the first known homunculus and was created by an alchemist with Van Hohenheim's blood. He was known as the dwarf in the flask because of the glass structure he was stuck within and longed to escape. He created a plan where he gave Hohenheim immortality and himself a body by sacrificing an entire nation. This made Hohenheim into a human philosopher's stone which let him live for as long as father lived. He would then create a mistress, teaching them alchemy and keeping himself under the protection of central command to then execute his next plan. He intended to house God in his body, which would make him a being stronger than God, and planned to do this by sacrificing a mistress. He then created his homunculi children and started his plan, although it was foiled by Edward and company and he was destroyed. Father is maniacal and has no feelings towards humans, killing swaths of them without a second thought. Poor helpless humans can't hope to lay so much as a finger on me. 
The reason he takes the gold medal of evil is clear. He is not only behind almost every bad action in the series, but also for the decimation of an entire nation. But what do you think? Let us know in the comments section below if you agree with our ranking. And let us know what we should cover next here on Otaku Binge. Make sure to hit that notification bell for your daily dose of anime and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite anime. Thanks for watching.